good afternoon. It's afternoon in the Netherlands where I'm located currently. My point of my presentation is um, going uh, into uh, Blazor Office add-ins. Um, my uh, problem with the Office add-ins usually was, and I give a, bit, a little bit of history, you started with VBA and VStudio.net and Complus. That's where I come from. And um, Office JavaScript uh, APIs were not really my thing. So I really had to struggle with that. Um, and the solution for the COM add-ins and uh, VBA add-ins, obviously, is that the Office JavaScript APIs are cross-platform and using generic web technologies. Um, but the problem with that is if you are uh, a regular .NET developer, you're um, really not adopting this API. Um, in the beginning, it was kind of incomplete. It's now getting better, and, and, and in, in, especially in Excel, it's uh, almost in par with the uh, with what we have with uh, with Fisto. Yeah? And um, but the real adoption rate for .NET and .NET developers uh, stayed behind, including me myself, and um, that was making it hard to adopt the uh, the Office JavaScript API. It's uh, by now it's getting uh, more complete, um, uh, but I was still thinking about how to get .NET developers involved in this. And the way to do that, I was thinking, what if we can create Blazor add-ins within Office? And obviously Blazor started as a server technology, and as you know, uh, Office JavaScript APIs require the code to run on the client. And when that happened, um, Blazor also developed the Blazor WebAssembly option. And the Blazor WebAssembly option is really um, um, on the client side. So if I move over to my screen there, we'll go to the demo. What I developed in my uh, live coding sessions uh, on, on Twitch and on YouTube is building an Office add-in based on the Blazor WebAssembly technologies. And I created a pull request for that for, by now, so you can see that over here. And so let's try build that uh, thing. If you go to the Office um, uh, add-ins uh, samples repo, just go to the root and you copy the GitHub clone command and you go into a new folder we're starting just from scratch there's nothing in there and we pull in the github command pulling in the full github repository from the office add-ins this will pull in all the code from the from the current uh, Office add-ins that are available, um, uh, that that are developed right now. But this will show you that um, it's not adding the pull request uh, in yet. So you have to do a little bit of an extra step to get that. If you go to the folder and see the samples. You will see there's no Blazor add-in in here. So if we go to GitHub again, and we go to the pull requests, then the fourth option is there is my pull request. We select that and do it again. Copy the code here. Go back to the thing in here. Run the command. This will check out the pull request and immediately shift over to the um, to the, the to the pull request that was created. If I now go to the samples folder again, now you will see there is a word blazer add-in. So we go into the word blazer add-in. And in here there are two solutions. There's basically one solution. I can open that in Visual Studio. Uh, 
you can hook with a Z. Take the solution, just run it. I'm running the Fish Studio Preview 2022. This will load the project. Let me pull this a little bit to the side here. Well, never mind. Um, in the solution, there is a Blazor add-in. That's actually the Blazor add-in that will be hosted in the task pane. And there is a second project in, in here that will be providing the site loading of this project inside Word. So if all goes right, we just have to hit a five here. And if the demo gods are with us, it should trigger Word and load the add-in there. There is Word. And you already see that it's loading the add-in. In the back, you see here, it's starting the Blazor server, but it's a web assembly, so it's running on the client. So if you open Word here, and show task pane, you should exactly see exactly the same thing here. And this is basically the same thing that you see over here. And this is a WebAssembly application. The reason why this is working is because the code that is running here is actually running on the client. So it is possible to interact with the host in here. In this case, it's the host is Word, but we can do things with that, like setting up the document where you put in let's uh, say five paragraphs in here. I'm going to convert these to content controls and put a tag on the content controls. If we go in here and show the default design mode and have a properties, you see now that I put a tag in here like odd for each of the content controls. So odd, even, odd, even, etc. If I Modify the content controls. I make it visible actually that they are tagged and put some things in there. Let's move that a little bit bigger. That's not all. You can also put an event handler on the content controls. And for this, I need to open the inspector. Otherwise, there's no use of showing what's happening. Sure, if I can make that big, yeah, we can make that bigger as well. So now you can see that the on deleted handlers and the on selection change handlers are added to the content controls. So now if I delete one of the content controls, let's say the delete the first event, uh, even content, content control, it will show you that the even content control is. Triggered. So the event is handler is actually handled. This is something that um, that is only available in the preview at this time um, for for Word. That is, uh, so be careful that you have the uh, the, the preview bits uh, running for that. Uh, but uh, merely for this demo, it's it's just showing what is possible and what you can do with it. If I now remove the event handlers again and I do basically this select first event even content control again for deletion, it will now not show any uh, events any, uh, anymore in this uh, displays. What I did with this, my little demo, I added a couple of um, small demos. I picked uh, randomly some, some small uh, samples from the, uh, from, from the repo. And you see while I'm switching, it's actually loading again. This is um, something that you um, uh, probably want to uh, avoid, but for demo purpose, I put this, this uh, in. 
because you basically want to make this a single page application instead of five separate applications. If you, if you run this, each time it's loading again. So if I pick the quotes one and clear the document here, we can just add in some quotes, all from the Blazor add-in, or we can put in some paragraphs. If you go over the code, you will see that, we, that I'm using some different uh, methods to, to do this. Um, inserting paragraphs, I'm now inserting five paragraphs, and it also returns the count of the paragraphs, so it's actually interacting with the task pane. So to show you how this is done, we go back to um, Viz Studio. Let's uh, close this one so that we leave the debug mode. Don't save. And you can see, it, as I said, it's, you, you, you just hit F5 and it should be running. Um, so if, if it's not running, uh, then um, please contact us and we have, uh, can investigate that. But the Blazor thing, if you go to the Blazor application, I'm not sure if I, if I can make that a little bit bigger. I don't think so. What you see here is the actual dub 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 root with the static items in there. And a Blazor application actually consists of a special file that's named like the Blazor add-in dot lib dot module dot js. And this is needed to preload the office host before, off, uh, before uh, Blazor kicks in. So if I make this a little bit bigger, then you will see that there is a before start. So before uh, Blazor is starting, we are preparing Office to run, and it will actually detect if it's work, working in Word or in the browser. Um, and uh, when it's terminating, when Blazor is stopping, then you can do other things if you need it. There's nothing in there at this time. Um, the actual add-in consists of uh, pages like the, um, the index page, that is the one that we showed, the first one, where I did the content control stuff. Let's see if we can make this a little bit readable. What you see here is the office layout, the, the Blazor layout that is with the page identifiers. If you go to the website and you type in content controls, I have after your URL, you will go to this page. If you go to Hello World, there's a different page page, page name there. But it's all uh, conform the uh, the Blazor uh, programming uh, standards. And the way this is done uh, is that the markup is actually in the Razor page, and the code is in the code behind page. You can also do this uh, inside the Razor page by an add code tag, but I prefer to put it back into the, uh, the code behind. Uh, um, the way it's interacting with Office is using the JavaScript interop option. It's using the Microsoft JS interop. And as you can see here, with the, the setup document, if I go to the Razor page, you will see that the setup button, this one, will trigger the setup function on the C sharp uh, file. That's this one. And the C sharp file in this case will run the setup document JavaScript function that is in the isolated JavaScript file. In this JavaScript file, the, the, the function is really exported, and this one, as you can see, this will, it will interact with, uh, with Word, the run thing on Word, and by accessing the context from, from this environment, it's able to do things like inserting paragraphs or inserting text and things like that. You can do much more complicated things like the event handlers. Uh, let's see if we can find that part here, the register events that will add um, the 
handle uh, content uh, delete and the handle selection change events to the um, to the context so that whenever the content control is deleted or changed from selection you will get a notification from that yeah that's about it uh, for now uh, the demo i think is fairly trivial um and um so yeah have a look at that and uh, whenever I, i'm not sure when it's uh, merged in the um uh, in the full repo but for now you can use the same trick as i did clone the uh, the repo and then go to the pull request and get the command from that uh, as well so with that um i want to finalize it with my own information there quickly that should be this one so who am i i'm Maat van Stam. i've been an mvp since 20, 2006 and i'm live streaming all these uh, things with the uh, like the office add-ins usually on thursday um building office add-ins using blazer and .NET technologies on youtube if you search me for uh, soft test and software, that's the name uh, that I'm using to uh, do my live streaming. Or you can uh, contact me on Twitter on AAFVSTAM. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, just let me know. Uh, and that's about, uh, about it, I think, uh, for now. Cool. Thank you, Martin. We really appreciate your uh, going into this space and putting together this really cool sample, especially because I've seen lots of questions out there from folks of, hey, we want to use Blazor. How do we get this to work? And, uh, you know, so I think this yeah. it's a step forward in that space. Mm -hmm.